previously on Cooking with Aaron. So in my last video, I made this beautifully amazing and delicious Detroit pizza, where we made the dough from scratch, and we made the sauce from scratch. And maybe you were watching this and you thought, wow, I'd really like to try that, but look at all of that pizza sauce. What is he gonna do with that? He's only gonna put three little lines on his pizza, and then what's he gonna do with the rest of that sauce and the rest of that cheese? And so that's why I made this video, where today we're gonna use that sauce and that cheese to make chicken parm. Alright, so we're gonna keep this recipe pretty short and sweet, but if we're making chicken parm, I guess we're gonna need some chicken. You can really use whatever part of the chicken you want, but what I'd say is the most traditional and what I'm using is boneless skinless chicken breasts, which will be easiest to cook if you cut them in half like this. And let's be real, you're not always going to get this perfect, so if you cut a really small piece and a big piece like me, you can either cook the small piece or save the little small piece for something else. Good thing I have another chicken breast so that I can try to redeem myself by taking my time and cutting it. Oh yeah, perfectly in half. Set that aside and we're gonna set up a really basic breading station, which consists of flour, egg, and breadcrumbs. For best results, crack that egg into your bowl and add just a teaspoon of water before giving a thorough whisking. Okay, breading this is actually super simple. We're gonna take our chicken and put it into the flour and then once that's thoroughly coated, we're gonna put it into the egg. To avoid a thick coat of breading on your fingers, keep one hand dedicated to the flour and breadcrumbs and the other hand dedicated to the eggs. Once you get to the breadcrumbs, put the chicken in the bowl and give it a little toss to let the breadcrumbs start sticking to the egg and coating everything nicely and that way you can start touching it with your dry hand and it won't make that mess. I ended up washing my hands quickly so that I could hold this up and show you more clearly what this looks like when it's fully breaded at which point I can set on a plate and rinse and repeat the process until the other two are done. Another quick note, any kind of breadcrumbs will do, panko, homemade, store-bought, unseasoned, seasoned, whatever you like. I'd like to keep this as simple and approachable as possible, so I am going to bake one of these chicken breasts off rather than frying it, and if you decide to do that, it'll go into a 350 degree oven. If you're chasing the crispiest chicken possible, you gotta use a fryer, Heat some oil to 350 degrees in a pan and place the chicken in carefully, placing it away from you. That way, if you accidentally let go and the oil splashes, it doesn't splash in your direction. You could do this with just like half an inch of oil, barely covering the bottom of the pan, or go full on deep fryer. That choice is totally up to you, but either way works. We are going to let this fry in the oil until the bottom turns golden brown, which should only take 2-3 to three minutes if your oil's hot enough. Also, this is why we cut the chicken breasts in half. If we didn't cut it in half, we would have to pretty much burn the outside of the breading in order to get the inside cooked to the right temperature. Good thing we know better, because look how beautifully golden brown that is. Total cook time in the fryer should only take you 5-6 to six minutes, and I like to put it on a wire rack to cool so that it stays nice and crispy. Meanwhile, it's been about 15 minutes since we put our chicken in the oven, and where are we gonna put this? Oh, there we go. It's not quite as crispy or as golden brown, but I promise it'll still be delicious. No matter if you cook this in the oven or in the fryer, go ahead and turn your oven to broil as we take these final steps. I'm gonna grab my pizza sauce that I made for my Detroit pizza, which I'm not gonna go through how to make in this video again, but I will put the recipe in the description below. Add a thick layer of the pizza sauce and then cover with a generous amount of cheese. Your best options here are gonna be low moisture mozzarella, fresh mozzarella, or provolone. I happen to have bought too much low moisture mozzarella for my pizza, so that's what I'm using. Hit it with a little sprinkle of dried oregano and into the broiler we go. I also had some leftover arugula from my pizza, so I'm gonna make a simple salad while those are in the broiler with some olive oil and lemon juice. You could definitely make some vegetables or pasta to go with your chicken parm, but in the spirit of utilizing my leftovers, I'm just gonna make this salad. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the big reveal of taking the chicken out of the broiler and noticing just how beautiful and melted that cheese is. To give the illusion that I'm somebody who eats in moderation, I'm going to put just one piece of chicken on my plate with some salad and then, as always, cover with Parmesan cheese. 
And there we have it, chicken parm. And at that, chicken parm were the only thing that we put on this plate that wasn't also in our pizza is the chicken itself. And to me, this is what being a home cook is all about. If I want to cook for myself regularly, I can't feel like every dinner is going to take three hours. So for me, repurposing my leftovers from previous meals is what's led me to be successful in regular home cook. If you found this interesting or helpful, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be sure to make more videos like this in the future. But for now, I hope you're really enjoying watching me eat my chicken parm for the last 30 seconds while I've been on my soapbox about being a home cook, and I'll see you in the next video.